and that means he's also well rested. So we're gonna see what happens here as we kick things off on Oceanborn for Onside Gaming. It is Solar. And in the upper left here, in the blue for Team Liquid, looking for that capstone performance on offline play. It's Clem. And that would be such a phenomenal start. I've got a dream. It's in my head. It's starting to form up. We've got Clem. He's made deeper and deeper runs in tournaments. Hasn't gotten that final offline performance. But you know who's on the other side of the bracket? Potentially looming in the finals. Dark. The final boss. The number one player in the world, according to Dark. According to Dark. <laughs> The number one player in the world. And I mean, he honestly, looking at that series versus <laughs> Classic, it's really hard to argue against the amount of swagger he had there. But uh, we're going to be starting things off on Oceanborn. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We still got this magnificent TBZ ahead of us. It is worth noting that offline and online are two completely different beasts. But it's also worth noting that, you know, Clem is super well rested. Yeah, that he is, and you talk about only two series, not only is it being well rested, not only is it having this opportunity, this is the first time Clem has to play today, and Clem is famous for not trying to get up too early, having that much better late night performance than early, early time. He hasn't shown anything about how he's thinking about playing TVZ here in this tournament, and yeah, does he play a ton of online? Did he just beat Solar in an online EPT Cup just before coming here? Yes, he did. But as we've seen in this tournament, the meta continues to evolve and the TVZ of a couple weeks ago didn't include quite as many Cyclones as we're seeing uh, find their way around the server. Yeah, we haven't seen too many Terran players really embracing, you know, the Cyclone mech. Uh, obviously, we've seen Hero Marine pulling it off to great effect. We saw that in Home Story Cup where he took down Raynor. Uh, he did ultimately fall, though, to the exact Zerg player we see in front of us when he tried it. Solar, very good does rate as one of the fastest players in the world, despite a lot of people not thinking it. He is actually, he is actually up there. He is a really blistering fast player. Yeah, that he, yeah, he's proven that, especially there in that GSL run. You know, finally, finally the bride after being the bridesmaid for so very long. But Clem showing off just how fast he is. It's a small, small thing in the grand scheme of things. But he snipes that first creep tumor. That means it's going to be harder to get creep to the third base. That means it's going to be harder to get creep past the third base. And when you're an aggressive Terran player like Clem, when you want to get those that pressure on the third and the fourth, it actually can make a bit of a difference. I would say it can make a significant difference. I mean, everything has cascading effects, especially in TBZ. And honestly, just the fact that he gets the first tumor, it's, it's a really nice feeling. Uh, obviously, even though, you know, these are experienced players, Settling into a comfort zone is a very nice way to start. And speaking of settling into a comfort zone, it looks like Clem, he wants to go for a very fast third command center and probably going to be that Cloak Banshee play. That is something that he goes for as really his bread and butter in this matchup. Yeah, he asked me to close my eyes and cast a game of StarCraft that includes Clem. I'll be talking about 350. The third base is just about done. There's a Banshee on the way here. It's going to, we know what's going to happen. And in fact, I think that's been one of Clem's weaknesses over time as he starts to develop into this world stomper. If I know, and you know, that Clem 90, 95% of the time is going to go for this Hellion Banshee thing. And again, he's very good at it. He's going to go into pressure behind that. He has won a lot of TVZs that way. But if we know that, then certainly his opponent does too. Yeah, and I mean, it's still a good enough build. That's the thing. Like it's, And it's not like Solar's going to want to completely blind counter it. That would be kind of foolish. You never know if there could be a proxy star for it because Clem has done that, you know, once or twice. He does it a non-zero enough times to make his opponent think twice. But Solar, he is going to scout in here. Will be able to see the third command center. Doesn't actually see the barracks as far as I can tell. Clem just looking around for some more creep at the front. And hey, he's just, it's, it's the dance we've seen a thousand times. They're flirting with each other. Eyes lock across the dance floor. And we're going to see a little bit more complexity before they really get into those advanced dance moves. Yeah, you know, I thought the TVT was the rom-com, the will they, won't they of Cyclone play, but I guess this is a, this is a, you know, it's a ballet. It's a dance spectacle, it's tango, as you go back and forth across the map, try to develop your way into the late game. And I think that's the other thing I want to track here. 
Daryl has iterated upon this idea of as quick as possible, getting that infestation pit as quick as possible, getting into that hive, getting quick ultras maybe, or vipers, or adrenal. And that really has been driving this TVZ meta, or this ZVT meta a little bit. But if there's one player that's really hard to do it against, it's Clem with an 8 rex. I mean, yeah, no, it's it's rather challenging, but I don't think Solar, he already showed versus Oliveira uh, earlier, was that today or yesterday? I, man, time is a flat <laughs> circle. Uh, either way, he showed versus Oliveira that he looks very comfortable but against eight racks play. That doesn't mean that it wouldn't necessarily work, but I don't think that's really Clem's style either. He prefers to go and turn it into a multitasking war, a micro war. He is very confident that highest mouse accuracy is quite obviously a massive feather in his cap, and he's finding a lot of value with these Banshees. You can see why he plays that Hellion Banshee so often. Seven drones on this pass, total of nine, and he, he hasn't lost anything yet. This is a great start for yeah. Clem. Perfect game in game one coming out of Clem, and I think it's interesting you bring up that accuracy thing. It makes a lot of sense. Terran players, high on that accuracy count. You gotta snipe Banes, you gotta target fire drones with your Banshees. Mouse accuracy is really important. And by the same metric, we saw Showtime, a top in reaction time, got to split against those Widow Mines. So it's interesting here to see how, or it feels, that the play styles that players like to play is really showcasing it in, well, what they've trained up and what their physical attributes are. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. Uh, Clem is the next generation of player. Let's talk about the builds a little bit from Solar because he did go for a very fast 1-1 before Lair and Baneling Nest. And I mean, if we look at the upgrade timings, any time that the Zerg is either on par or ahead of the Terran is great. Clem goes straight for the Wood of Mines, does skip the tanks, and is gonna start applying pressure on the map. But Solar, he's got a lot of creep here. While there isn't that Bane speed yet, the 1-1's one -one gonna help a lot. That it will, and the interesting thing here as well is that Solar is really one of those last Zergs that is consistently going Ling Bane, Ling Bane, Ling Bane, getting a quick Bane Ling, that's quick Bane Ling speed. It's been a lot of move to Roach play as Clem gonna try to get on top of this base, targets the Lings down, He'll keep the base, he won't get the base, but again, that's a lot of Lings going down. But as I was saying, Solar, he's like the last Zerg that is consistently going for this Ling Bane style. Everyone else, yeah, <laughs> centrifugal hooks, doesn't give you that plus five HP, they move to Roaches. Yeah, no, it's uh, Solar is still very confident mm -hmm. in his Ling Bane and the Ling Bane Hydra. And I mean, he's shown why he is still such a phenomenal player. I've said for a very long time he's the best macro Zerg in Korea in terms of pure, straight-up standard macro play. Uh, we are going to see Clem taking position on this high ground. Bane speed has completed. Clem was a little late to start his 2-2, and that means Solar gets the start. But here's a nice little jump from Solar, splitting off a small amount of Ling Bane, picks off some bio, and gets some frontline Widow Mines. Uh, that's a nice little skirmish, but the army supplies... I mean, Clem has kind of cut SCVs. He is up 30 army supply all of a sudden. I mean, you say that, it was like 45 when he took that fight. Solar traded very nicely into that engagement, really cut down on some of that lead, and now forcing the total to pick up. But oh no, pulls the Widow Mine into the Bane Leans. It's not a big deal, but it was more than he was primed to get. And meanwhile, you talk about this multitasking coming out of Clem on the left side. That's a decent amount of bio, a decent amount of mines, and the Queens are gonna find themselves under heavy duress as Lings run forward. Look to oh. soak right on top of the bear of the Marines, and yes, the second Wedo Mine gets more, but even still, that cleans that up very nicely. That was a really nice mind drag right there from Solar, but it ends up still being a situation when, where Clem can continue to keep pushing. And I do find this really interesting. Clem prioritized the drilling claws to get rolling in this game very quickly. Oh, nice little spread from Clem. Solar gonna chase off of Creep. He's got a ton of Ling Bane and will force Clem back. The medevacs are a little bit low on HP. At least I, I see one of them with a dangerously low HP and a full payload. Solar, though, I mean, the creep in the middle of the map is fantastic. Clem's starting to nip away at the edges. Oh, the oh. Widow Mine. Oh, oh, good catch. Oof. That was a, uh, that was a flirt right there, but uh, not able to finish the deal. Turns out she said no after all. Yeah, Clem, Clem started the tango and Solar kind of stomped on his foot. Yeah, not, not leading properly. Uh, but the other thing that's interesting here is we're seeing it. It is into Lurker play coming out of Solar in this game. He's got plus two attack upgrades. The Hydras are not going to be as effective as they might otherwise be. Look at that target fire. It's not winning the fight, but it does find value time after time. As these Widow Mines, they're clustered all over the map here. Solar splits well for now, and it's going to split really nicely, in fact, and a full medevac will fall. So even as we talk about target fire coming out of Clem, Solar holds on really nicely. And in general, he's taking paper cuts. He's not taking the whole shebang, although that would have mine. 
little better. I mean, yeah, if we look <laughs> at the resources lost, it is... Uh, it's actually only 2,000 in favor of Clem at this point. That's nice, but it's not an egregious amount. Solar is maxed out. He's adding on those Vipers. He's got the Hive Tech. Not missing a beat on anything so far. Ooh, Widowmine's going to burrow on up. They do get some decent connections. Actually, some very nice connections right there. Still a couple Banelings left over, but there's not a lot of Lings to stow. Ooh, the hot pickup just a little too late. He does get away with that full medevac. Barely, though. A lot of turbulence in that uh, on that flight. That there was in the bottom side. Clem not able to find room for that drop. Generally, when we see Clem doing something like that, it's because he's you know, killing a base or uh, doing a ton of damage in the bottom side. But his medevacs were low. They weren't able to find that angle. So instead, it's just a strict loss for Clem. And that buys time for Solar. Vipers now have energy. Adrenal glands halfway done. Plus three armor on the way. Lurker range on the way. All of these key upgrades that are going to take Solar's army from good to very good in this game state. And they're right around the corner. That they are. We also see a Nidus Swarm coming in from Solar. Uh, ooh, decent Widowmine shots, but once again, not terrible splits from Solar at all. Pretty good. A couple more Widowmines do burrow on up, but Solar is able to constantly drive this back. He's been skirmishing really well with Clem, and he's been very far ahead of his bases, which means his creep has been able to, to stay safe. Now, this might be a little bit of an overextension on the counterattack, but hey, he gets out before he goes too deep, so good job from Solar to measure the counteraggression. Absolutely, and we look at this as well. You talk about there's about 2,000 resources in the good for Clem in that fight. Over the last minute or so, at least, uh, I need, maybe I need to update myself, but Solar has been trading better. He's done a little bit better, found more values. Widowmine is not going to get a ton once again, and Solar will force him back. But now, finally, unshackled off the map a little bit. A run by is there, but so too is Clem reinforcements. He's not going to get a ton, but Clem, we're used to him being the one on Solar's side of the map, on the Zerg side of the map, forcing, just really forcing tempo. Look at where Clem is. He's got his own little quadrant, and that's it. And those two lings are getting so many SCVs just by themselves. Not just that. The Nidus Worm in the main base is going to pop out a bunch of lings. You talk about the speed of Clem. The speed of Solar is really showing off here. He's done an amazing job. Not really been caught out of position once. He is actually going to find Clem a little bit out of position himself. Widowmines, even with that Dwelling Claws, they do take a little while to burrow. And honestly, that looked phenomenal for Solar. Massive jump. Are there any Widow Mines left at all to defend this base? I don't know. Blinding Cloud on the planetary could be good. He doesn't drop it. Nice EMPs. Oh, but the base still goes down. Very nice pickoff for Solar, and he is cruising in game number one. Now, if you look at the supply though, Steadfast, it says it's 190 to 159. That's a big lead. It's all in the economy. It's all in that worker count, which is a problem. Clem needs to redevelop his economy, especially after losing that 12 o'clock base. But his army is still pretty powerful. 3-3 is going to be done very soon. He's got ghosts on the way, adding in liberators. And you want to talk about the one unit that Clem has made his own in the last month. It is that liberator play in TVP, but also oh. in TVC. And that Widow Mine drop. 14 drones. He needs a little more, but that buys him so much time. That's a really nice drop. And you can see Solar already instantly rebuilding, but the Lurker's in the main base. The Nidus Worm does not get denied. And if there's one thing a Terran hates, it is having their production camp. That's actually going to allow him to hit the low ground third base as well. Now, the Banshees that have stayed alive from earlier, they're going to be able to eventually clean this up. And the Liberators are being added on, but the push at the front from Solar, so many Banelings are going to be able to crash on in. They take down the Widowmine before it can fire. Solar is still maxed out, and he is doing a phenomenal job with the counter aggression. And he's just not letting Clem have a fifth base. On the bottom side, though, there is a counterattack from Clem. Yeah, that there is. And it's going to get a lot of drones, absolutely. But it's not going to get enough. Six drones go down. Solar handles that with a plum. And I love what Solar is doing here. It can be so tempting to build a ton of lurkers and transition into that game. But he knows he's forced Clem into ghosts. He knows he's forced Clem into this anti-lurker setup. And, well, might as well build Hydraling Bane. Build that swarm, that ghosts, that liberators. They don't handle that nearly as well. No, they do not. Obviously, those snipes are still good against the Hydras, but... Yeah, they're, they're, they don't, don't get the same value that they do if they're killing Lurkers or, you know, I mean, Broodlords or whatever, what have you. But I still think, obviously, the Ghosts are very sturdy, and as long as you can keep that Ghost count high and intact, it can be very difficult. But you see Clem scanning out that right side base, looking for that. The, I mean, the Terran player is definitely in some trouble here, but he's he's keeping the army mostly intact. Viper does soak the Widowmine shot. Solar, hello? Where are those? Oh, 
they're on walkabout. It's, 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 you know what? We're here. It's just about Christmas time. They want to go home. They want to visit their family, their mommy and daddy Viper. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, I like this position out of Clem on the high ground here. It's, oh, Snipes goes oh, down. Gets Christmas the wounded Viper. Ruined. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes our flight's delayed, and sometimes the snipe kills us, and it yeah, takes one way, half dozen the other. For now, though, this high ground position that Clem is holding on, it's making it hard for Solo to take advantage of that side of the map, and by holding that high ground, he's bought himself an opportunity to take the 12 o'clock base again to redevelop his economy, and those snipes are really nice, but Bailings, well, they're gonna get two ghosts, third one gets saved. And Solar, at this point, Clem has been allowed to get a fourth base. He's been allowed to get a fifth base. And that's when it starts to get a little scary as the Zerg here. When you let the Terran on the map, you let them start to get away from their quadrant and start to take those extra bases. Game goes later, goes trade better. It's not quite as simple. No, it's certainly not. And Oceanborn is not one of those maps that it's easy to take, you know, nine, ten bases as the Zerg. You are going to be a little bit capped. Uh, good job from Clem. Barely gets the cancel, but he does ultimately get it. Solar's been doing a really great job with the changelings, constantly keeping tabs on his opponent's army. Solar is going to look to move forward. Nice snipe on the Widowmine once again. This one, oh, that's a lot of lings, but there's still quite a few banelings left over. However, Solar, I think he needs to maybe get out of here, and yeah, it will end up being just a little bit of an overstay, but if he can get out into the main base with this, that would be pretty nice. Hey, Cyclones, <laughs> they make an appearance. It took us 17 minutes, but it's there now. And honestly, Cyclones are a pretty solid anti-Nidus play. They, you know, Nidus aren't mechanical units, but Cyclones are fast. They can get the lock on. You have this ability to cover a lot of space very quickly. But as Clem tries to find his way up the high ground, first of all, Baneling's on the way. Second of all, there's a Zerg right there as the Widow Mines get targeted down, but the Ghost or the Viper gets the Impede. Not going to have that Blinding Cloud for now. And now, this is not a planetary steadfast. Yeah, there are Liberators defensively, but this is a little bit harder of a position to hold on to. It is, but I love the way Clem has positioned the Liberators behind this. He has been able to basically put them in a position where if Solar wants to try and kill them, either A needs to abduct them or B needs to commit so deep to get them. We're going to see Solar going for the attack. Widowmines once again getting some big shots, but there's still so much Ling Bane Hydra. And Solar, ah, he's looking to break through, but Clem, does he have enough to hold? With the kind of pullback behind the wall, it looks like it should be enough. Great defensive kind of kiting here from Clem. Still, Solar is slowly but surely battering Clem down. He's also slowly but surely losing more resources than Clem. And when we talk about late game TBZ, when we talk about how this wants to go, Clem's still not in a great spot, don't get me wrong. Losing that fifth base or that north side base or losing workers is a pain. Lurkers here on the drop is, it hurts so much. But we're starting to see the bones about how Clem wants to win this game in 10 minutes. You let Solar attack into you, you defend a little bit, you back up, but you can't lose 21 SCVs. You can't lose 21 SCVs to a couple lurkers in your third. No, I was just going to mention, like, the, the multi-prong, the aggression from Solar has been so strong. There's been maybe a couple of times where he's overcommitted, but I think it's only because the Widow Mines have maybe been a little bit bigger than he was expecting. Meanwhile, once again, Lurgers in the main base. There's only the one, so it is going to get cleaned up there in the picture-in-picture. Picture. And, uh, oh, we got oh. the Burrowed Shark Fester. This uh. looks scary for Clem. If a big, big fungal growth lands, that could be everything, but a nice scan from Clem finds the Infester. Ooh, this one will just narrowly avoid the scan and the second one. Where's the Unburrow? Oh, this is going to be scary. There it is. The Fungal on the Ghost. Going to be massive right there. And GG gets called Solar. Finds the killing blow, connects, and takes game one. We've been talking about how good Clem's TVZ is, about how he can take... He actually is one of two players in this tournament. The other is Solar that has taken multiple series off of Serral this year. And we talk about it. This TVZ, that's incredible. I, I don't know that people gave Solar enough credit. That was an impeccable ZVT. He did everything he had to. He traded incredibly well in the mid game, forced Clem back onto his side of the map. And then from that point on, the map is yours. You send waves in and Clem was not able to defend quite well enough. No, and it's so difficult when you're so, you're dealing with such a fast bit of aggression and it, it feels like it's just never ending. Clem, ultimately the cracks began to show, wub, wub, wub. <laughs> and it did, it did eventually break 
the Terran player wide open. He's not playing that Siege Tank style, not playing that heavy defensive, like kind of stand firm style. It was more of a stick and move. The mobility of the bio and the mines, we do see obviously that mine drop was very nice, but by that point, Solar had already gained so much momentum and he just never let Clem fully stabilize, fully establish a comfy position. Just a really phenomenal swarm from Solar. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Steadfast, to give Clem credit here, we did see the bones of how you want to play that. That one fight when Solar attacks too far in and until he had a Lurkers in the base and killed 21 SCVs, it wasn't looking all that great. It was, okay, the trading's getting worse now. Okay, this army's starting to get to where you want to be. But Clem just couldn't quite there, not yet. And Steadfast, now we move on to Equilibrium. It's, I, th I think it's the first time I've cast this map in the tournament. It's an interesting one. Game one right here. This is going to be a pretty cool map as we have spawning up at the top left for Team Liquid. He is the young Frenchman, Clem. Clem. And in the upper left, in the blue, the reigning GSL champion. Up one, it's Solar. Honestly, that was a textbook, how to break down a Terran player. Obviously not a, a full turtle Terran, because like I said, Clem uh, was playing very flexibly with his setup, but still just phenomenal. Nidus Worms in the back, Nidus Worms all over the main base, utilizing the obviously pocket location, constantly hitting in multiple locations at once. Just phenomenal stuff from Solar. And we do have to point out as well, the difference between textbook, Nidus play all over the place, finding value and Losing five Nidus heads, a losing a ton of gas, really starting to find this inefficiency is not all that different. It is a very thin margin, but Solar was able to take advantage of this notoriously fast Clem and just play a little faster. But Steadfast, Equilibrium is one of these maps that we don't see a ton. It's the second least played after Rad Huset. What do you want to see out of Clem? Anything different in this matchup? Again, you got that dead air space. It's, it plays very differently. It certainly does play very differently, uh, but for one, it's obviously we got to talk about the gold base. The gold base is a big power boost. I don't think we're going to see Solar take it as certainly not his second base, probably not even his third, maybe not even as his fourth, but eventually it will give him a little bit of a boost. However, what I'm looking for is Clem potentially to go very heavy liberator and really take this game long if he's not able to end it or gain a significant advantage early on. But we've already seen Solar was he was not at all afraid to uh, to just smash, just Hulk smash. Although we do have to give, again, Clem a little bit of credit here. You talk about the Liberator play, taking it late, doing everything you want. Well, Clem was down for quite a while. He was not trading well. He wasn't shutting down the economy well of Solar. So we can talk about, yeah, you know, the Liberators didn't look good. He was able to Hulk smash this. He's gonna get a drone here in the main base. I know, nah, he's gonna have a cancel. What am I talking about? But it is a bit of a different angle from the Reaper finding his way into the main base first instead of the natural. And that did buy him some time to force the cancel, to force the drone out of mining. Just a different approach. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. He, he doesn't get the pick off, but uh, yeah, forcing the spore crawler is always, it's always a nice little caveat. But I think he would have preferred to maybe kill the first creep tumor like he did in game number one. Instead, Solar, he's, he's going to be able to keep everything alive, so good job. Once again, fast third CC out of Clem. Not a big surprise, but as this series progresses, I, I think I would like to see him try something maybe a little bit spicy. Doesn't necessarily have to go full beyond and, you know, two base all in, two base all in, two base all in, but I'd love to see him maybe mix in a little bit more aggression. I don't think this is the map for it, though. No, Equilibrium no, no, just is so general. big. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's very fair. But for now, it's 3CC play. It's I think we're going to see a... I don't even think we're going to see like an 8-Rax type of thing mid-game time. It's going to be a fourth base. But the problem with this map as well for Terrans, you talk about what you're able to find, both third bases are incredibly wide open. Now, Solar doesn't seem like we're going to see some Roach play off that. 1-1 one, one Roach Max on this map is pretty popular. Instead, Link Speed's just about done. Queens are on the way. It's a very standard play, but defending either base for the Terran, again, it, it's not the easiest thing. No, certainly not. It's, uh, it's not comfortable, but once you can kind of establish that big setup in the middle, it does become a lot easier. You get a bunch of sensor towers, but we're, we're a far cry away from there. 
getting from where we are to there. And ooh, this is going to be ooh. really interesting. We've got a Viking opener from Clem into a medevac. And I wonder if this is going to be... How many Marines does he have? Okay, just the one Marine for now. I wonder if this is going to be Hellbats or maybe just a Hellion drop into the main base. Solar did build the Creep Tumor in the main. So if it is that Hellion drop, he's quite well set up to deal with this. That is the one problem is there's no Overlord on the outside of the main base that would give you a little bit of warning about what's happening. So he's going to see it when Creep... And uh, that's what the Vikings That's what the Vikings are. Yeah, Vikings Absolutely. saying you, you don't get to see <laughs> I, I, you know, I, the blind leading the blind here. Actually, I guess the, the vision, the, the visible people leading the blind, because Clem knows what's happening. He's got the Viking. It's going to tell him everything that he wants to see. Yeah, it's the, it's the John Cena meme where he just waves his hand in front of his face a bunch. Uh, he's trying to cause as much electrical inveterance as he can <laughs> to Solar. And we'll see if Solar is able to yawn his way through it or not, as we've got the Hellions setting up for this. Is that a, wait, is there anything in the medevac right now? No, it's a fake. Psych! Here it comes, but a nice Evo Chamber block. Still gonna be four drones, but Clem will be able to escape on out. Could have been so much worse. Very nice panic response from Solar. And we can see that that speed coming through again. Absolutely, and by the way, Melee up or infantry upgrades are just a little bit faster than Solar this time. One of the big things that allowed Solar to be very happy in that last game was, yeah, Bailing speed was a little slower, not ready for the first push, but 1-1 one, one was. And the Lings were always going to trade really nicely because Clem didn't have his upgrades yet. Ooh. This time, Clem is able to make something happen, but I love this Ling run by on the north side. He knows Clem's on the map. He knows all the Hellions are on the map. Maybe he can find something. Yeah, this was actually a very dangerous moment right there. And we're actually going to see the Marines. Nice hot pickup, getting some value out of that meta back, but we will still see a lot of lost mining time. Not much damage off of some fantastic worker stacking there. Will allow him to get the Hellions back home. That was a great defense from Clem. Brilliant stuff, to be honest. He lost, yeah, it looks like one SCV and a handful of Marines against a lot of Lings. That was really well done from Clemon. 16 Lings. And in this early game, when you're trying to drone up as hard as you possibly can, that will make a difference. That is not, it's not eight drones, which is really what you're looking for. As he's gonna find more drones on the gold base as well, we talk about it being valuable, about giving that shot in the arm, that adrenaline to your economy, but it's also very easy to push, very easy to punish from multiple angles, and Solar's been putting a focus on getting Creeper Shred past it as quick as possible, but Steadfast, reality check, Clem's already here. He is, and uh, I mean, the Queens, with no combat shields done, no one won either. These Marines are actually not gonna do fantastically against super high energy Queens. Look at that, Clem retargeting the Winamine. He says, no, 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 you're trying to tank this with the Queens. I'm not gonna let you. Great job from Clem right there. But we are still gonna see Solar able to buy himself a lot of time. Hellion's in the back looking for some drones, but Clem, of course, focusing on the while focusing on the Marines more than anything, will allow him to get a little bit of this creep spread and really kind of hem Solar back. Oh, kill on the base. Clem catching uh, Solar snoozing just a little bit right there. And honestly, Clem's starting to cook. That he is. Now, that, of course, we have to talk about this is the fifth base out of Solar, not the fourth. And you want that, especially if you're playing Ling Bane, you really want that for your larva. So macro hatch in the main, fifth base, whatever it is. But at least there's the fourth base done. Nice splits there again on the Widow Mines, making sure not a ton of Lings go down. And Solar, he does have the gold base, right? It is, it's not at the drone count, it's actually at 78. It's doing fine as well. But Clem is making Solar sweat. He has to be in multiple spots. And it, with the spot right now, when Clem has all this, this momentum, Solar has to split his army per perfectly. He has to control perfectly. And that's where Clem really starts to shine. Oh, speaking of which, he does manage to snipe down seven drones from the back. And with all of the chaos that Clem has been able to cause, he's been able to clear up a lot of creep and make it more difficult for Solar to respond. Baneling's getting soaked up by the Hellbats. A little bit of target fire right there. Clem, he's finding a lot of value. Baneling's oh, barely getting taken <laughs> down. Clem targeting them all down. Brilliant stuff. And now the multi prong coming in. Looking to deny that fifth base again. Clem. He's not just cooking, he's on fire. There's a reason that Clem is one of the fastest players at this tournament. He's microing both sides at the same time. The base doesn't go down, absolutely not. But he gets Bane Links, he gets 17 drones. And by the way, his fourth base is on the way. It's floating onto the other side. These Widow Mines continue oh. to cause problems. 19 drones, 20 drones hit the deck. Everything is going so well for Clem right now. And his army, well, actually, it's actually not all that much. So, a <laughs> little bit of tickle on the fifth base. Reminds Solar that, hey, you're, you're not in the best spot. 
Yeah, no, he certainly isn't, as uh, Clem once again going straight into those Widow Mines, skipping the tank section of this game, and he has been really putting a lot more pressure on this time. I'm really loving just the, I guess, fine-tuning we're seeing from Clem. Ooh, Widow Mines do get caught a little bit, but he's able to spread. Still, a lot of them do get taken down. That's a pretty good trade for Solar, but he's really far behind in army supply right now. That he is, but at least he's on creep, and that does make up for quite a bit. But there's not a lot of creep path past this fifth base. It's a very easy retreat for Clem right now. Looking for the target fire, gets a lot of the veins, but this Hydra firing line, it's powerful for now. Clem's gonna try to take as good trades as he can, but he's not gonna be able to break through. Not for the oh. moment, and that's a oh. Stellar supply blocked. He had so much free space, and now, well, you gotta build seven overlords at a time. Cosplay is a laser, and every single moment that you're not building units, Clem continues to trade. That he does, and he's doing such a good job. Clem really muscling through here in game number two. And I mean, at this point, we do need to invoke the ancient, ancient French proverb. His name is Luca. We got a look at the supply because it is a big supply lead for Clem. And I, I really don't know if Solar can hold on. He's still making veins. He's still doing everything he can. But Clem has just been relentless in his aggression. And we can see even though game number one went very well for Solar, it doesn't take much for things to turn rapidly in the other direction as Solar will tap out Clem, takes game number two, and we got a series on our hands. Clem just took Solar and just took him on each shoulder and ripped him apart. That was, there was as good as Solar was in game number one, and he played very well. He looks like he was a league behind Clem. He looked orders of magnitude. He didn't look like the same player on, they didn't look like they belonged on the same stage. I mean, that can happen once you start to, once things start to go a little bit awkwardly, once you're one of your defenses, especially like a player like Clem, against a player like Clem, some of your defense starts to slip. It doesn't take much for things to just crumble. And that's kind of what happened for Clem in game number one. And it's what happened a little earlier on for Solar in game number two. We saw the Hellion run by. It didn't get a ton of damage, but it got a little bit. This was where it felt like things started to really fall apart for Solar, is the defense on this base was not clean. The Hellbat soaked up so much damage and let those Marines just go to town. At this point, I mean, the 2-2, two -two, it was, even though you mentioned the Hydra firing line, they, they were not as powerful as those Marines. 2-2 two -two versus 0-2 is a big difference. Uh, really, it allowed him to not get pushed upon immediately. Clem decided to attack somewhere else, but yeah, you're right. I do want to point out, though, Solar, he got absolutely bamboozled by the fake Widomai or fake Medivac into the main base. And even still, he only loses four drones. Even still, he gets that block off and if a game goes a little differently, I think the, pro the you want to talk about the problem, taking that gold base so early before the creep was far past it, instead of taking the linear base or maybe going a little bit further forward, that gold base, it's powerful, right? It's got, it's a ton of money. It has a rich gas as well. It really is what you want. And by <laughs> for, for a very good reason, it's very hard to defend. Yeah, it certainly is. It's, uh, it is not easy at all, but I think it would have been a lot easier to defend if the first waves of aggression could have been defended a little bit more cleanly, but Clem did another great thing where he was retargeting those mines, not letting the queens clean them up, and it allowed Clem to clear up so much more creep and create those openings for himself. And I'm just really excited to see what we've got in store for the rest of the series because both of these players are playing extremely well. That they are. Now, you want to talk about the next game we're going to get into because we had Equilibrium, we had our weird map. I, I don't know if, I don't remember if there's another weird one after this, but Alcyone is going to be map number three. And I've been talking about it every time we see it. You have that Zelnaga Tower in the middle of the map. You have that line of sight blocker that a Terran can put a tank in, that it can put a Marine in early game. That makes it very hard for the Zerg to establish vision. And we can talk about TVZ about multitasking, all we want. We can talk about TVZ about economy and development. It's also about vision control, about making sure your widow mines are where they need to be, your tanks are where they need to be. And if Clem can get that push through the middle of the map going, it becomes very hard for Solar to handle it. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. It is, uh, it is a really powerful pushing position. And it's gonna be interesting to see if Solar is able to deal with that. I've always liked Alcyone because it's kind of like the golden wall of StarCraft II maps. Yeah, very much. It's it's interesting, it's different, but it gives us some pretty fantastic games. As now, 
We're tied up here in this series. The crowd is full, they're excited, and we're just about ready to get into game number three of our series. And as we get ready in the upper right, in the red for Team Liquid, tied it up here, it's Clem. And his opponent, spawning down in the bottom left for Onside Gaming, it is Solar. God, that music is so like, so triumphant. It really is. I just feel like, uh, feel like I should get my life together when you're listening to it, you know? Well, you know who does have their life together? This massive crowd listening to that music, watching these players play because I mean, come on. Yeah, <laughs> I too can pander to the crowd. You guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I love you more crowd, it's fine. Anyways, game number three of this series. We're not, there's, yeah, we're seeing the same stuff. Clem, I kind of expected to see him flex something here. Yeah, it's Alcyne. Yeah, it's the golden wall of, of the current map pool. But you can proxy and all, he's shown the same thing two times in a row. What point does he do something different? I, well, I mean, he did do something a little bit different. There. Obviously, we had that fake meta back in game number two. But if you are going to go for a big three base push, or so, rather a big two base push, I would kind of love it on Alcyne, especially since he did open up Viking in game number two, could put a little bit of threat into Solar's mind. Now, what I would love to see, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but Clem is a player that almost never proxy raxes. If Clem goes on to win this map, I wanna see a proxy three racks. I don't think we're gonna see it, but that's what is on my Christmas list. Now, I haven't been particularly nice, so there's a good chance I'm gonna get Cole instead, but maybe Papa Clem, maybe Santa Clem can grant my wish. Oh, and big deal here, you're talking about Clem going for a three base, or a two base push, excuse me. Clem blocks the triangular base. He blocks that high ground base that gives the Zerg a ready-made high ground surround that makes these five racks two base, that makes these eight racks three base plays really hard to push into. So Solar is gonna take it as his fourth probably, but that means again, the creep outside of that base is not gonna be quite as developed if Clem decides to opt into something like this. Yeah, yeah, and not just that, it's also, there's potential for a tank push from the low ground, and mm -hmm. you can siege up tanks down there. Uh, Clem, that's actually the first time he's gotten a Zergling or a drone, and he gets the creep tumor, and another one. Another one. And, uh, well, my dreams have been dashed. Yeah, no, it looks like I did not have Santa, Santa on that hotline blink, because it is going to be a third command center, but we'll see if maybe, uh, maybe a three racks later. Yeah, steadfast. You made your list. I guess you didn't check it twice. That's the problem. I didn't even problem. check it once. Oh. Now, when we talk about this game, I think we saw, if I remember right, Clem went a starport into third base, at least in one of those games. This time, his third command center, it's a little bit faster, playing a little bit greedier in this series. Not the big difference. It's still going to be Hellion Banshee, most likely, but getting into that third base, just a little bit faster. I mean, Solar is one of those players that very rarely goes Roach. Like, oh, yeah. He is almost a... He, he just almost doesn't do it, period. Uh, but, you know, it's it's still one of those situations where, yeah, Clem does prefer to play a little bit more stock standard save. Ooh, nice save on the drone right there by Solar. And Clem just going to sneak out, kind of like the robbers in Home Alone. Sneaking away. Mm. It also makes sense. I mean, we talked about this. Not only is Solar not a Roach player, he's, again, the, one of the few Zergs that is consistently playing Ling Bane, five, six, hatch, quick upgrades in this matchup because of the Banely nurse. But for now, well, uh, you're gonna force a cancel. There are no drones there to kill. But the fact that Clem was able to force this with two Hellions and a Reaper before he really gets himself ready, it's not drones, but it is nice. Yeah, it's, and, and at this level, every little bit certainly does count. Uh, Solar does get a little bit supply blocked right there. I think, did he double extractor trick or was that an Overlord going down? Let's take a gander. Uh, that was a double extractor trick, okay. Uh, we are going to see the Liberator coming on in, and Hellion Liberator is obviously very difficult to deal with here. The Overlord of Solar will look for that scout now. Where is the Liberator on the map? Now, as this Liberator is finding its way across, as Clem is getting ready for the one-two punch of the Hellions maybe into the main or the third base, the Liberator into the main, Clem's got, or Solar's got a bit of a run by into the natural here of Clem, and well, again, all the armies on the other side of the map, and this time, there's no medevac. This time, the Marines are not in position. So, last game, one STV, nothing went down. This time, six 
seven SCVs will fall. And on the other side, the Hellions, I think they dove in, but they get two drones. On the balance of things, you're pretty happy. As Solar, you are ecstatic. Yeah. He forced the Hellions back home. Liberator will get pushed away. It only got two drones, but it is rather trapped right there. We got the anti-F2 siege up coming in from Clem. And now the Hellions are going to try and go for something, but enough lings in position. Clem does need to find something, or he is going to be very far behind going into the mid game off of those SCB losses. And there it is. He is going to go for the dive. Oh, the oh no! Whoa, that was almost a Christmas. Well, miracle or disaster, depending on how you want to look at it. But the Hellions dive into the main base. Drones are still on the menu. Will the barbecue get canceled or will Clem find what he's looking for? Well, for now, the Liberator's getting even more and the Queens have to be in the main to deal with this. Apparently, Clem is just a fan of Christmas down under because we're getting the Christmas barbecue. Hellions get 12 drones on top of the Liberators as well. And the run by was great. The Hellions, they're greater. Uh, I mean, yeah, and that, the Liberator. Was, that was really, really nice for Clem right there. I said he needed to find something to equalize. Well, I, I would say he found more than enough to equalize. That is absolutely going to put him into a great position going into the mid game. And now it is Solar who finds himself in a really tough position. I do want to mention something that's pretty much happened in all three games. The combat shield timing of Clem has felt just a little bit late. And all of those early skirmishes with Marines, they've had their 1-1 done, but they haven't had that combat shield, and it's allowed the Queens to do better in those fights. And that is going to be difficult. Hey, Steadfast, I want you to look at the production. Actually, it's done right now. Solar knows he doesn't have a Bailing Nest. He forgot it in this game. And now this bio, certainly the fourth base gets canceled. In fact, Solar so panicked that he wants a Bailing Nest. He gets two, but now 16 Marines in the main base here. The Lings are going to force him back. And to be totally honest, Steadfast, without a bailing nest, with that pressure coming in from Clem. The fact that it was only a cancel on the fourth, you don't want to lose it, but best case scenario. Yeah, probably is best case scenario, but I think that actually does come down to the combat shields because if Clem has that done right now, he can stick around and go for the fight. Oh my goodness. Whew. Medivac almost took a wrong turn at Albuquerque and uh, nearly got shot out of the sky, but this is still a massive momentum advantage for Clem right now. He's going to be able to start up that 2-2 as soon as he's got the money for it. But really just going with the Widow Mines is going to be so difficult to deal with. Bane Speed is very far away. And I do not know if uh, Solar can hold this base any for any period of time. It's going to be hard. I mean, Queens on the high ground are always nice. You can transfuse, but there is so much bio here that Solar is just not fast enough. Meanwhile, Liberate on the backside. There's nowhere to run here. Stuck between a hammer and an anvil of Lings, of Marines, of Widow Mines, of Liberators, and Clam trying to do what he does best. Great Widow Mine goes in. Bane Lings, well, they're going to force him back for now. He doesn't oh. have enough to target fire, but the Widow Mine says, oh, those Bane Lings, I'll take those. That was, that was a big final Widow Mine shot right there. <laughs> yeah, that, was. Was a, uh, that was a big one right there. Solar technically holds, but he is down 30 army supply once again, and Clem really has the initiative right here. There's not a whole hell of a lot of banelings, enough to force the lift off, and one of the medevacs does get taken down by the Queens. But once again, that creep has been pushed back. We've got Clem pushing in on the top side. We'll find a few more drones again with just a single medevac drop, and Clem, once more, he is cooking in this uh, game number three. That he is, and for this point, if Solar can find some way to keep Clem away for a second, a big run by would be great. That'd be fantastic. He doesn't have the supply for it. Now no links to buffer for the Banelings, and Clem's gonna split away. No Banelings left in this army. Well, I guess there's one, but you need two to knock the army down. So Clem trades well. He will get forced back here, but it's still more damage. Seven drones go down. It's. It feels like it is a consistent push towards the breaking point as Clem is pushing Solar f closer and closer to the precipice. He hasn't fully been broken yet, and it is worth noting that the 2-2 upgrades of Solar are faster, particularly that plus two armor. Clem, ooh, is gonna kinda get caught on the top of the ramp. Pretty decent Baneling connections right there, but as Clem splits away, he's able to maintain that army lead again. This is really just looking so difficult for Solar to finally get that big, huge stabilizing fight. 
At least Solar's on five bases now. At least he's on 84 drones. But the target fire on the Banes oh. is beautiful. And the Hydras, they're just not enough there right now. Solar needs another wave. He needs another army. And a Bane link will connect very nicely. But Clem sticks it because here come the reinforcements. Here comes the rest of the Marines. And Solar at this point, he's got five Hydras. He's got a couple Lings. The Queens are not enough. And the Widow Mine on the backside is not going to get anything yet. So Clem, again, he will get forced back. But every single time, like the rising tide, he gets a little bit closer. He sure does. Solar's done such a good job of hanging around, hanging around. But as the drop comes back in, Solar is forced to tap out once more. Clem is on the verge of taking down Solar for the first time at an offline event. Huge opportunity. Huge opportunity. And you know, Steadfast, it's fitting that Clem is the rising tide in this series, taking away space time after time, because what team does he play for? It's Team, team Liquid. Liquid. <laughs> and as we all know, the rising tide drowns the sun. Does it? Yeah, that's how it works, right? I... It's like, you, you watch the sunset, it goes down into the water, and then it disappears. But that's not always at high tide, Steadfast. Mm, okay. uh, often that's at low tide. Fair enough. Yeah, well, the moon, certainly, the moon helps. And the moon reflects the sun, and the moon drives the tide. So, Solar is lulling Clem into a false sense of security by reflecting his power against the moon, and we're going to go to a five-game series, is what I'm hearing. Makes sense. The dish did also run away with the spoon. That's important <laughs> to note. We did forget that. But we're going to be going into game number four. And you talk about names. This was how, We didn't do this on purpose. It's Solaris next up, and Solar... He actually has an extremely high win rate on the map named after him. Or was he named after the map? Hmm, well, I guess we have Is to talk about that. Is Solar older than two months old? I don't think so. Hmm. No. I think a... he might be. Uh, you know what? Uh, I guess, well, Solar's going to have to win the game. Uh, Rachel's going to ask him that question in the post game interview, and we'll, we'll, we'll get our answer. Are, Solar, are you older than two months? You look very young, and you're very fast. No, oh, he's very fast. I mean, we talked about it on the player card. Solar's one of those players that is, the, the player ranking speed is uh, a little bit lower than actually his tested speed, that reaction time, that mouse accuracy, those, that average APM that he has. He's a speedy player, but he's going to have to take advantage of every little bit of it here. As uh, we say no creep for Solar, I want creep for Solar because I want a game number five. As here we are on Solaris in the bottom left, up two games to one, looking for Nate with someone on the bottom side. For Team Liquid, he's the Tide, it's Clem. And his opponent, looking to defend his namesake, win the map and force game five. It's on side gaming solar. And you know, Steadfast, this is a Christmas themed event. And you talked about having a dream, right? Of Clem doing well. Well, the problem is, is that the one Christmas carol we have about dreams is called Silent Night. And I guarantee you, if Clem wins this map, it is not a silent night. It's gonna be a raucous night. It's gonna be a loud, crazy night. It certainly will. He is one map away from finding himself on the final Sunday. That is, I mean, once again, that would be so huge for him. He has been looking to get that offline victory at a premier tournament, at any tournament really, for a very long time. And if he can do it here, I mean, we're gonna blow the roof off uh -oh. this place. I mean, but again, we got to give Solar the credit. This is his map. It's named after him. He's very good on it. He, the speed zones you can take advantage of. It's a little bit easier to get that fourth base than what we saw in Equilibrium, than what we saw, I guess that was the fifth on our last map. But even still, Clem, you said it's 2-1, right? When he go, if he goes up 2-1, not when he goes up 2-1. See something different. See a proxy. There's no 3-hex on the map, but there's still room. Maybe a Hellbat play, some sort of weird drop, move into something a little bit different. Play around with that one map lead you got. Yeah, I mean, once again, I, I knew when I was asking for it that I wasn't going to get it. It's kind of like that PS5 when you know you've, you've kind of been uh, not the best kid and you're like, Mom, Dad, can Santa get me a PS5? And they're like, did you finish your homework? And you're like, yes. That lilting yes where they know you're lying. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I put a mark on every page. I put my name on the top of every page and that's enough, right? I, I started. I thought about it. Wow, you, you honestly got farther than I did. 
didn't even open the book. Well, you know, close enough here. But uh, for now, again, it's the Reaper play early on. Clem has been getting a little bit more every time. Well, he got the Creep Tumor game one, which was nice. And he's actually forced a couple more lings out of Solar. I think the first couple games he was at four. Now, Solar giving a little bit more credit, gets six. But because he takes that damage early on, it's a little bit harder to get that Creep Tumor that is oh so important in the mid game. Oh, Ooh. that's actually very nice. He snipes two lings after forcing the six ling opener. That's the equivalent of killing a drone, basically. Two. What, one, one? Well, you get one for the kill, and then you forced extra extra lings, so that's a well, second. Well, yeah, yeah, but you, you killed it. So it's yeah. effectively, instead of making the drone, you made the lings, and then you lose the lings. It's, you know, yada, yada, yada. Tide goes in, tide goes <laughs> out, internet series of tubes, and we're, uh, we're here in the 310 mark. Yeah, we are. You know, Steadfast, it's, it's actually kind of funny. We talk about Clem as the Tide, as this player that just takes more space on the map until you're dead. Well, the other thing the Tide is, is perfectly predictable. People can take a look at it, at the moon and the sun and where we are in the world, and say, oh, we know what's going to happen in this game. Doesn't stop it. Doesn't hold it back from its relentless advance. And the more I think about it, it's like the perfect moniker for Clem. He just relentlessly advances, does the same thing, and, oh, good luck, you know? I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of him as the, the Robin Hood Terran. Because in my head, I was like, oh, he's the most accurate player. Maybe we call him Robin Hood, but then everyone was like, so he steals from the rich and gives to the poor? And I was like, ah, yes, that is what people think of first. Well, I think if, of Robin Hood. if he takes down Cyril in the Grand Finals, if we get there, and he takes from the rich the Zergs and gives to the poor Terrans a championship, <laughs> that's how he's Robin yes, Hood. Yes, it's the Terrans that are the <laughs> poor ones on this, this particular moniker. Protoss players, they don't even make the list. They're that <laughs> meme where, like, Terrans are, you know, they're flailing at the top and the Protoss are already underwater, just a skeleton. Well, I mean, Steadfast, you want to talk about differences here? It's not a quick third base this time. Nope. Right? Oh, well, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh. A quick third base and a Viking. Never mind. I can't count. I saw the command, the orbital on the way, and I looked at the structures, and I am a liar. And I'm not a truther neither. That's okay. I, uh, I mean, I... Always do math on stream, but not always successfully. Yeah, so. Oh, a little bit of an awkward rally on those Hellions, but it's going to be fine. There's nothing there to punish. We are going to be seeing uh, just standard play once again. A quick double Evo out of Solar. He's been favoring this pretty much all series long, and it's, it's going quite well for him. But Clem has really found his footing in this series, and it's, it's going to be up to Solar to make sure he's defending those first few pushes impeccably. I think the big deal here is that we're not seeing Solar. Last two games, he's gone for a Ling run by. It's looked for some value. One game it found value, one game it didn't. And then Clem counter punches him and just, it's so much more. So Solar's looked good in the game. He was able to get allowed to get into the mid game on somewhat of an even footing. It's the games that he's not allowed to find that, that all of a sudden Clem just dominates him and runs over and becomes that slow, relentless top. Sorry, it's Clem. Fast, relentless tide. And in this game, we're not seeing that crazy run by getting damage. He said, I, I got my creep. I'm gonna get my three bases. My fourth base is gonna be on the way eventually. I got the Bailey Nest on the way, 1-1. One, one. I'm gonna get a scout. I'm not gonna get that mule. That would have been very nice for him, fresh mule. And if I'm a Solar fan, if I want this to go to game five, this is the what I want to see out of Solar. Taking no damage, getting into the mid game, forcing Clem to come at you. Yeah, seriously. Uh, and I mean, so far, he's done a good job of deflecting everything. The he Viking, you know, it's just Hellion Viking, but it is going to be a very fast double medevac drop follow-up behind this from Clem. Solar is looking to do another big ling run by. Ooh, Clem, he sniffs it out, and he is going to go hunting, but Solar, uh, he's going to be able to find this as well. I wonder if the Viking maybe spotted this on the map. Regardless, this first push is going to be very difficult to deal with. Clem has not started up combat shields, though, and that is going to undercut not just this first push, but more importantly, the follow-up. That it will. Now, the other thing we want to point out here is second factory very quickly. Armory on the way is this fourth base, this fifth base, excuse me, comes under extreme duress, and the queens are off creep. So there's no transfuses available right now. Clem takes advantage of it. Two queens go down as we commit some regicide. But again, the big deal here is that, yes, combat shields are slow, and that's a big problem, especially as he continues to forget it. But... Drilling Claws are going to be very quick in this game with the armory done, with that second factory so quickly. Although for now, it's just for more tanks. Yeah, this is interesting. This is actually the first time he's playing tanks in this matchup. There it is. He does remember the combat shields now, but it is super late. Oh, the Marines betraying the rest of the Terran base. We will see the lift up in the main, but Solar is going to be able to get into the natural, and that is going to be quite a few dead SCVs. Good quick pull means it's not as bad as it could be. 
but it is still going to be five workers going down. Clem will be able to micro these Hellions away, and he's, he does a really great job, honestly. Great micro from Clem to make sure that wasn't a total disaster, but Clem has not started up his 2-2. He's been heavily distracted for the last little bit of this game, and this is a much better mid game for Solar. You know, Steadfast, you talk about that, and it did force Clem back, and it did find value, absolutely. But I look at this, it's like, ah, it's only six SDVs, it's a lot of deadlings. He doesn't cancel the fourth base that he had every opportunity to, and I, it was good, I guess, but it could have been so much better. Is now, well, Clem finds value, does Clem things last possible second. Bailings arrive, picks up, goes away, fights again another day. Yeah, but I still really like this mid game for Solar. Oh, yeah. It's not over by any stretch, but this is. This is as clean as his, his opening was in game number one, which is the map that he did ultimately win. Doesn't mean he's going to win here, but with a 2-2 much faster for Solar, it is going to be difficult for Clem to find great fights. We do have the multi-prong coming in, and the acceleration zones are going to be a difficult thing to handle. There is no full wall at this third, but with a siege tank well placed, that will push a rather large number of Lings back. That it will. So Clem, he's batting down the hatches really well. I love this around coming in. Now, Hydras are not quite oh. fast enough. They're not going to get those Widowmite or those Medivacs down. So Clem survives. He continues to trade. And honestly, if we look at resources lost, he's actually, for how bad this mid game has been for Solar, where it doesn't feel like he's getting all that much, he's tripling up uh, two and a half times of Solar at this point. So even, again, the run by slows him down. He's trading pretty well. Yeah. It Clem is, is still doing a good job of keeping his army alive, but he hasn't been able to clear up much creep. He hasn't yeah. been able to find inroads on any of these bases, unlike in the previous games. He will be able to get the jump on the sixth base. Very quick reaction time from Solar gets the cancel, but uh, that's really the first win Clem has found in this mid game. Solar behind this is getting into a hive. Lurker Den, he's advancing his tech. He's on 90 drones. This is looking great for Solar and I, like I said, I'm really impressed with uh, how he's tidied things up here. Absolutely. Now, Steadfast, here's the question. Solar's just got his 2-2 done. Hive's on the way. Hive's just about done, actually. But you got 2-2 as the Zerg. The Terran doesn't have their upgrades yet. Do you make anything out of this timing, or is it just enough to stay at home to get yourself into that Hive? I think I think you just stay home to get the Hive. But if your opponent overcommits off creep, or onto creep, I should say, I mean, take it for sure. That timing will pretty much disappear. Solar, ooh, does he know about this massive drop into the main base? We are going to see the skirmishes around the creep. This is a huge doom drop coming for full medivacs, and that hive looks in so much trouble. He's going to go after the lurker den. We do see Clem is really keeping the attention of Solar pinned on the front. The hive goes down. He does start Adrenal Glance and plus three Carapace, but a fantastic pickoff for Clem, and those are the plays he's looking to make. That it would be, and now Hellbat soaked the Bailings. Here come the Marines on top of this Ridgecast base. It's not enough to push just yet, and also, shout out to Clem. You make a drop like that happen, you target things down, you actively micro. It's so easy to lose so much of your army to Banes when your army's on the map. Clem loses neither and continues to find inroads on this base of Solar, but again, talk about Solar a moment. His creep spreads really nice as he tries to find his way down. No friendly fire on those one of mine. Solar is going to be able to chase Clem back for the moment. He's got to pick up run away, and so much of this army now in the sky. Can Solar turn this around? He does get a big cleanup on the army on the top side. He's already nearly rebuilt the lair, and because he didn't lose the Hydra, then he's able to rebuild the Lurkers, and he is pushing in on top of this base. Clem pulls the SCVs quickly. That tank is in a phenomenal position. Going to be able to get a lot of damage before it ultimately gets taken down, but the Orbital Command will get picked off. Very nice for Solar, and... Oh, that's not nice at all, though. One Viper, two Vipers. That's a big reset on the Viper timing. He's got no Vipers now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Now, yes, Hydras are anti-air, but you have no good way to really deal with these clustered medevacs. Look at their health bars. A lot of them would go down to just a single parasitic bomb. And Clem on the aggression once again. And even getting that base for Solar is not nearly as nice as it would have been a minute ago, two minutes ago, because on that production tab just a bit ago, three command centers on the way. Solar, yeah, he denied mining for a little bit. He did swing this back. But it's not quite the economic advantage that he would have found if this had happened a minute or two ago. Even still, Adrenal's done, plus three armor's just about done, plus two on the way. And with our Hive timing, he's really not going to miss that much of an upgrade anyways. Not a huge amount. Well, I mean, yeah, not so much. He's getting that plus three Carapace anyways. We did see a bunch of Banelings 
morphing in from Solar on the other side of the map. For a second, I was wondering if he was going to try and go in on top of the planet journey. I actually don't think he had enough Banes, if that was the plan. Solar will lose that Spore Crawler. Clem, uh, stepping a little bit too far on to creep, will realize his blunder and backs away. Solar, though, can he find some value with that? Clem is kind of on the retreat. There's no Widowmines here, but the target fire through the cloud of Lings and Banes. Beautiful target fire from Clem. Very well done. That being said, the Widowmine friendly fire at the end. That got a lot of the Marines that Stellar was not able to get down with the Banelings. These Banelings are going to try to bust the Planetary. Does he have enough? He does. Okay. So the Planetary, he had the math right, math right, barely goes down. And this army on the right side in the speed zone trying to take advantage of that. So Clem, great target fire, absolutely. But Stellar in these trades and these economic advantages, he's finding just a little bit more here. Yes, he is certainly able to shut down a lot of his opponent's economy. Clem does have a lot of those replacement command centers, as my pal Sal would say, spare tires. But it is going to be difficult to kind of hold on. Similar to what we saw in game number one, Solar, once he grabs the initiative, it is so difficult to deal with. And uh, yeah, this is a lot of Bane League showing on up once again. Solar not over committing, though, doing a good job of staying back. You know, Steadfast, we talk about this hive timing, these upgrades. Clem's got plus three just about done. His plus three armor is miles away. It's eons away. So yeah, Solar was shut down, but here come the Vipers now. And Solar through the speed zones, playing around with that, not letting Clem take advantage of that speed, that micro, that target fire that he has. And Banelings now into the natural here. Solar's army right up the gullet, and Clem out of position a little bit, but he's got an arc now. And this is the problem. When you can overcommit, you lose a lot. So many Banelings, but even still, they're going to get good connections. Corb Orbital, Command Center gets targeted down, gets canceled. And Solar, he gets out of there. That was a scary spot. Clem's army was coming marauding down from the north side. It was, and it was ultimately able to get the pushback, but Solar did a nice job of kind of turning around at the right moment, getting a few Bane Link connections, and still being able to get out with the majority of his army. That was a nice cleanup for Clem. The resources loss has been holding steady at about a 5.8k lead, which is something to keep in mind with the constant skirmishing and constant fighting going on. Oh, absolutely. And it's interesting here. We're starting to see Lurker upgrades on the way once again. And Solar on the north side. Clem's got two ghosts. He built them. He has the tech. But the money? Well, actually, he's got a decent amount of gas. It's the minerals that are the problem as he gets more bases here. And Steadfast, I know this isn't game five, but this is match point here for Clem. And what a game we're seeing out of Solar to force us maybe into game five, or at the very least, to end this series on. He's playing so well. This is so back and forth. They really are both playing magnificently well. No Spore Crawler at this base means that he's going to need to send some Hydras over there. There is a Spore Crawler on the bottom side. Ooh, but a base on the top side is going to go down. It's 12 o'clock somewhere as the 12 o'clock base falls. <laughs> Yep, it is, uh, actually, it's um, 7 o'clock our time, but that's fine. Is now 3-3 on the way for Solar. Plus 3 attack soon to follow as now Vipers are on the field. Medivax will go down. Ghosts get targeted down by Lings. And this drop of the main base, the drops have been powerful early on. They're low. It's it's only two Medivax. Solar should be aware of this. As Lings are starting to filter in. So this it's not going to be the drop that sniped the Hive. No, certainly not. And I mean, that's that's not even where the Hive is. So it's not, not only can it not mirror it in terms of effectiveness, he can't reset the tech either. Solar has gotten into those Lurkers now, and there's only five Ghosts on the field. We will see a lot of Ling Bane coming on in. Once again, that late Cyclone from Clem. I think, I honestly think it's just a mistake, but so much Ling Bane Hydra with the Lurker support coming in. The base is going to get sniped again. Maybe Clem's able to save it, but Solar is really cooking now. Ooh, but the counter drop, the double counter drop. That it is. I love our observe. We don't have enough screens to see exactly what's happening here because Clem fighting for his life, fighting for that semifinals. But I think we're going to have to go to game number five. Yes. The drops are finding value, absolutely. But 31 Banelings are gonna hit the deck. And I think Steadfast, that's worth a little bit more. It is a lot of SCVs going down there for Clem. And yeah, he did kill a lot of drones on the other side of the map. But it is still 69 drones, and that's obviously not so bad. There's, I feel like there's another way you can say that. <laughs> it's pretty. Well, it's actually not pretty good, but it, it's reasonable, especially as Clem sits on 46 SCVs. He's only really on 
a base and a half. When we talk about mules, when we talked about how things have been mined out, not a ton of middle patches on that base that he takes for the third time now, I think. The economy for Clem, yeah, he had 45 SDVs. If you got mules, could be okay. That's not the situation. He's, his economy is not great. No, it's certainly not. He does still have a oh. fair number of orbitals here. Four orbitals. It's not the eight, nine, ten orbitals that we, where you can just drop the mule hammer like crazy. Clem, though, is starting to cause some chaos. He's still competitive in the army supply. Oh, just got back up to five orbitals. Clem making me a liar. Very well done. Uh, the lurkers do have to be a little bit careful here. Clem able to get a nice knife. Good job from Solo, though. Able to bait out most of the mines. But as Solar... I mean, those are some good snipes. Clem skirmishing with his army very well. That is, you know, I almost don't like the lurkers here because this ghost guy, I guess maybe Stoller thought that the gas, the money of Clem was bad in the minerals and the gas, so he couldn't afford enough ghosts. But we're looking at, what is this? We're looking at 13 ghosts on the map right now as Queens. They're not going to get oh. sniped. Ice Crisps, and the full medevac goes down. But we're on 13 ghosts. That is more than enough to deal with the lurkers, to deal with the hydras, to deal with a high tech army. Yeah, it's uh, and, and if you can keep those alive, they're gonna be so valuable. Obviously, they have such high HP. They can survive quite a few banelings to the face before they actually do go down. And I gotta agree, the lurkers in this situation are not gonna be maybe as good as they potentially could be. But if they get the right spines, they could be massive. And yeah. once again, as it's as we've seen in TBZ from the. Age old thing, it's all gonna come down to the execution and the fights. That will, but you know, steadfast. I'm getting a little shades of game number one here where Solar's doing well and Clem fights back and we're seeing shades of maybe he's gonna make something happen. And then the Infester, as that's a nice lurker shot, even as it does go down. And then the Infester pops up, shuts everything down. We got two on the map here and we've got Burrows. So pay attention to that, look for that in the fight and oh. this positioning. Solar, do you see it? Are you ready? That is a very dangerous looking infester. That, that's not the kind of infester you want to walk into in a dark alley. It does not look like, uh, does not look like a very comfy infester for the Terran army, but Clem, not gonna get hit yet. He does scan, will not see that infester. It is very far away. In fact, it's going on its own little adventure. Yeah, I, I thought he was gonna take advantage of the speed zone to wrap around and make that happen. Oh, but there, there it is, is. the big fungal! Every single thing, but it's not a second one, so at least some gets out. But Steadfast, I don't know how many ghosts went down. It's a lot. The mass death scream of those special operatives mean that at this point, everything is dead. The economy's dead. The army's dead. One more fight from Clem. One more fight from Clem. That's pretty much all he's got in the tank at this point. Losing 29 SCVs during that. Scan does come down. He will be able to find the other Infester. Actually, no, that was the same Infester that committed that war crime on the Terran army. Clem does still have a powerful army, but he pretty much needs to get it done with this, or he is just not going to be able to keep up with his opponent. Uh, that he will, but again, this army, it's got 3-3. It's got the ghosts of the Bailings trying to find their way forward. No Infestors this time, but Clem again, he got a pickup, and the Fungal misses. He's not going to get the Medivax, but the... Oh, no, Parabinacidic Bomb in the corner, Steadfast. At the very least, they're not low enough. They're not going to die from these bombs. Not yet. Well, I'm not so sure. It's going to be rather close. At the very least, it will be a bumpy ride. Solar kind of abandoned the position, and Clem is going to be able to unload into the main base. There's a lot of ghosts here. Clem will be able to get out. Are there any more? Have the Vipers recharged? Actually, at this point, I, I don't think it matters. I think Solar has mined enough, and he's just rebuilding enough. Clem hasn't been able to replenish. He didn't find the fight he needed. And it looks like we are going to game five. Another fungal growth coming in. Not able to get the game clinching find, but these medevacs look like they might just be trapped in the, in the top left. And if there's vipers anywhere close, I think that army is just doomed. Oh, and there it is. GG gets called. And we are going to game five. Solar fights back and protects his own namesake. That he does. Game five here. We've had two game fives in a row. I've been so lucky to be able to see that, to be able to watch that and steadfast at this point. I, we do have to give Clem credit though, right? He was in a bad spot, but at the end of that game, he shut down, he denied the economy of Solar a little bit more. He's able to go and, and not swing back, but at least make Solar consider the fact that he doesn't have money at the moment. And that, I, I don't know that that's enough to really be a silver lining, 
but it was there, and now we're looking at side Delta for map five. Yeah, yeah, and I think that is going to be, I think that's going to be a bit of a better Terran map. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not, it's not like it's a horrible Zerg map by any stretch, but I think there's a lot of good tank positions on this map. There's a lot of good positions where you can kind of ping pong with drops, low ground, high ground. And I think Clem is going to be more than okay to have this be the fifth map. But at the same time, Solar, I mean, he's coming off of a really nice win in game number four. This is, well, is going to come down to the wire. That it is. And you know, we talk about outside Delta as it's going to be as a Terran in map five. Stats have to be taken with a grain of salt because Clem is Clem and he throws things out the window and it doesn't matter because he plays, he's so much better than other Terrans. That being said, across the ESL Masters, win, uh, winter across this tournament, Side Delta's got a 40% TPZ win rate. Hmm? Okay. Clem's, Clem's still gonna win? I mean, he certainly can. <laughs> I, I don't think you're gonna tell Clem that there's a 40% win rate and he's like, oh, okay. He just packs <laughs> up his keyboard, leaves the stage. He's like, well, I can't win. Uh, obviously, yeah, that is actually, that's notable. That is, that does mean that the Zerg players are winning two to one on that map, but I would be curious to see like how the breakdown looks, who's beating whom, and to be honest, I'm just excited about what's in front of us. We've got Clem, we got Solar, we got a game number five, and we're getting into it right now. That we are now. Clem fighting in the crowd. You love to see it here. All the support he's been able to get, but steadfast. Before we get into game five, what do we see? Clem, same thing over again, something different. I mean, I'm, I'm almost certain it's gonna be the same thing, but God, if you if you proxy three racks now, I would I would just absolutely lose it. Okay, but here we are. Crowd, put your hands together for the final time, maybe, for Team Liquid, looking for that semifinals. It's Clem! And his opponent fighting back in game number four, looking to secure a spot in day number three. It's Onside Gaming Solar. And you know, Steadfast, whatever happens in this game, assuming Cyril wins the next series, which we don't know, Oliver is looking better and better as this tournament goes on. But assuming Cyril wins, Clem, Cyril are the only two players that have taken two maps off or two series off Solar this year. Probably his scariest bracket run. For Solar, you mean? For Cyril. For Cyril, oh, certainly. Regardless of who wins here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I mean, it's... Solar's looked very good in ZVZ for sure. And he's, his style is so dangerous. He is one of the most dangerous Zerg players out there. And pushing Clem to the limit is obviously, well, it's a sign of how dangerous he is, even with Clem really being that rising tide that you were talking about. But I'm focused on this map in front of us right here. And I don't know. I think uh, I think we might have a macro game on our hands again. I, I believe that. Instead, fast, I'm with you. Why look at the future when we can look at the present? Or maybe the presents, because Christmas is in a week. <laughs> but anyways, again, this is going to be a macro game. As much as I talk about Clem, or you talk about Clem, doing something interesting, something different, well, he's done the same thing, or roughly the same thing, four games in a row, and that is how he's, that's how his bread is buttered. That's how he's wound his way onto well, per Ligulak, the best Terran player in the world. Yeah, yeah, I mean, his standard play is so damn good. But of course, you know, the difference between offline and online, we always have to talk about that. Clem, he's still looking to get the monkey off his back. As we get into game number five, he's gonna just start things off the same way he has every time. Well, and snipes a link, nice. That he does, second one, second one. No, he's not gonna get it, so. A marginally worse start for Clem in game five than game four. He lost one, or he gets one Ling instead of two. Yeah, I mean, it's small potatoes, <laughs> but every potato does matter. You know, it's like I matter, you matter, we all matter. We're every single matter. potato matters. He's doing it. He's doing a thing. He He's switching things up in game number five. That's the kind of bravado I want to see. Love it from Clem as he throws down a second factory. Here's your question, Steadfast. Is this blue flame? Is this Cyclones? I don't really, uh, probably not a Widow, some weird Widow mine thing. Is this Blue Flame, is this Cyclones? I mean, normally I would say this is Blue Flame, 
but smart money's on Cyclones, given the patch. Well, we I think, on the I ice, think so. we are going to be seeing, yeah, I think we are going to be seeing Blue Flame, and there it is most likely. I mean, it still could be the Fast Hurricane Thrusters. No True. Cyclones on the way just yet, but I mean, time will tell. And Clem has been experimenting with those Fast Hurricane Thrusters builds. He's got a weird build where he gets two racks and two factories and goes stim at Hurricane Thrusters, and wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have some Cyclones in a series in, I, in ESL Masters Winter in Atlanta as we try to get into the semis? Wouldn't it be nice? It's about damn time the Terran Cyclone finally got the spotlight, you know? It's been working so hard, hasn't gotten the recognition it deserved, finally gonna be able to show up here. Uh, I do like the way that Clem has set this up by going for early Vikings. He has discouraged Solar from putting a lot of Overlords on the map, and that's gonna make it very unlikely that this gets scouted until Clem decides to show it. And now it's gonna be three Cyclones at a time. Little Dive coming on in here. This is the same way he's been using the Hellions up to this point. There should be no tell unless Solar can get the full scout, but this is a very empty looking main base, and Clem, well, there's got to be something somewhere for him. Yeah, here's the question. Do the Marines get the Overlord down before the Cyclones pop? Because at the very least, even seeing two is a big deal. But he's not probably going to see it because the Hellions dive in to distract Solar. He doesn't get the scout. All he sees is that there's a gas in the main base and Steadfast. It would be. <laughs> of course, there's a gas in the main base. Well, it was enough for Solo to pick something up. Yeah. Because he, it's not just about seeing something. Sometimes you see the lack of something. No third CC, no starport. He figures out there is something coming. And with that Roach Warren being built, that's going to help out quite a bit. God, you know, so not only is this the Hurricane Thrusters build, this is the Stim build. This is the double racks, double factory, third base on the way. And now the Cyclones are going to try to snipe some Queens. They get not one for now. Nice transfuses, but the lock-ons are permanent, and the Queens will fall. This is so much damage already for Clem as the Queens continue to go down. Link run by on the other side, though, looking for these Cyclones. And they're not going to get them, though. The more the rally continues, and Stim is halfway done. It is halfway done. We do have a third command center starting behind this, but it is the Cyclones that are in the face of Solar right now. Roaches do finally pop out, but the Queen Count has been really just heavily decimated as a lot of these Roaches fall as well. Clem getting a great deal of value, and he's keeping the Cyclones alive. Nice transfuse from Solar on the back end, but this is looking really tough. That it is, and I, I, I don't feel like I've ever seen this build from Clem work properly because Generally, it's against Dark and he hits him with roaches and, and, and things die. This game, we're starting to see the power. It's a lot of trading. Drones are dying, queens are dying, roaches are dying. Yeah, Lings kind of get on top of the Cyclones, but they're speedy boys. They're going to be okay. But the Ling run by is going to be nice. It's going to get oh. into the main base. And yeah, it's not going to get a ton. It's a scout. He's going to be able to see. I th we know. And okay, finally, he's going to see the tech lab. He's going to see the research on the tech lab on the barracks. And that is a massive scout steadfast. And he, he, of course, sees yeah. all the other barracks, and he's able True. to click on those, sees the double engineering base, so he knows what's up. And he did have the double Evo. He knows it's not going to be Cyclone Mech. That is a massive scout, because up until that point, there's a good chance Solar might have gone for the double attack upgrades. So the fact that Clem was not able to close the door, not only not once, but twice, is a big problem for Clem and a really big find for Solar. But you mentioned the drone damage early, and you mentioned the fact that Solar didn't drone up particularly fast. I still like this position for Clem very much. And those Cyclones, because they've got that speed upgrade, they are going to be able to be a valuable part of this army moving forward for the next little bit. Yeah, that they will. And uh, man, Cyclones are just so powerful. When the army's not too big, when uh, Zerg has like 175 supply and you're looking at 10 Cyclones, they're not incredible. But Solar, already the infestation pit on the way because infestors are a really good way to deal with this and the Marines that are going to come up. Because yes, they don't two-shot, but it still locks things down, especially with some Biles. And now we would say, hey, the Cyclones are going down. That's a valuable trade. Cyclones are cheap now. It's not that big of a deal, especially as they continue to trade, especially as they continue to find that tempo. Yeah, as long as they are able to trade without just going down for free, this is going to be good. Now, it will be a little bit complicated to try and micro the stimmed army with those Cyclones. Cyclones are going to have to make sure they don't block the uh, Marines in and end up getting hit with some big Baneling connections. But do we even have any Banelings on the field? Not just yet. It is going to be up to the Infestors and potentially Ravagers. Clem says, nah, I don't really want to keep the Cyclones with this. 
as it is a little bit more of a complicated army to control. And he's he's doing a good job of kind of nipping away the creep with Solar and not going to let that get taken down. multi prong from Clem, though. Yeah, it's, it's weird that we see uh, I got a bunch of Cyclones in the mid game in a bio game, I guess. But it is finding value as the Infestor looks for the well, looks for the fungal, not going to get it. And importantly here, now Solar knows that yes, there are Infestors on the map. I got to or Clem knows I got to play a little differently. I got to be wary of that that one fungal that can ruin all of my aggression. So he's multi progging and a queen will go down. Where's the army? It's there. Okay, but more queens go down. More creep denial here. More lack of injects. More lack of transfuses. And when you're solar and you're so back against the ropes, you need that beef line to make sure you stay okay. You certainly do. You want a nice thick beef line to be able to keep you safe. We do have a couple of rebuilt tumors, and they actually see exactly where the tanks are for Clem. Cyclones on the bottom side, looking like they are going to get cleaned up here. Ooh, nice spread against the Infestors Fungal. Very good job from Clem. And this base is getting perilously low. That it is, and the Queens went down earlier, so Transfuser Hard Banelings into the tanks. That's not the trade, as Clem looks to target them all down. Not enough! And the Marines are going to have to run away. Steadfast, one Baneling, heavily stim Marines, all the difference. Yeah, yeah, no, that was a... <laughs> that was Clem. Clem stimmed a massive amount of his army at the outset of that engagement. Kind of just ran it back. I don't know if he... I don't know if it was a panic stim or what it was, but it does end up biting him at the very end of that engagement. Scan. Oh, he can't quite get that final tumor. Okay, no, it does manage to go down. The army of Clem really abusing this position very nicely. Solar, though, will he be able to get the cleanup? Actually wasting a lot to kill that one tank. Clem starting to pull a little bit further ahead in army supply. Yeah, but the Viper shows up, looks for something, doesn't get anything. Target fire again, but these Banelings are really uh, nice. And the supply is not incredible for Solar. He still has a lot of roaches, so 90 army supply is kind of light. It's not that good. He is starting to force Clem back. He is consistently now on four bases. Fifth base on the way on the bottom side as Clem tries to take that fourth. So Clem absolutely trading incredibly well, having a lot of timing, having a lot of pressure on the map. But it is it does feel like it's starting to stabilize for Solar just a little bit. Yeah, Solar's been doing such a good job. Great retarget fire there from Clem. Solar tried to mine drag that would have mined into Clem's army, but Clem said, nah, -uh. targets down a Ravager, and even just killing a Ravager, that's value on a Widow Mine. 75, 25 or 100, 100. Yeah, I'll I can do that math on stream, and I'm happy to take that trade if I'm Clem. Now, we are gonna see the Ultralisks starting to hit the field for Solar. He went for those very quickly in this game, but Clem has gone quite quickly up to the Marauders again. And he's been doing that in most of these late games, and he will finally find Solar out of position. Snipes the base, that's a huge pickoff. And Steadfast not only quick into those Marauders, not quick into that anti-armor, he's got Ghost Academy done. The moment he sees these Ultras, three Ghosts, four Ghosts, how many Tech Labs he has on the way, it's gonna be a very slim timing, but maybe a powerful one is now the Ultra shows forward. Oh. Little Mines get a ton of Banes, and tickle the Ultra a little bit, that's fine. Big deal, Ultra has the upgrade, it has Kindness Plating, plus two armors not done. They're not incredible yet, and they won't be, well, for another five seconds. So Clem continues to put pressure on, we don't see any ghosts on the way just yet, even with the tech. No, and I mean, he, well, he starts there one up go. right now, but he does have a nice little momentum advantage. Ooh, he's got to be a little bit careful. Solar gets the jump on Clem on the top side. Clem will be able to get out with a fair bit of bio, but that was a nice little jump for Solar. Meanwhile, though, on the bottom side, Parasitic Bomb could be good. Might end up being a blinding cloud. No Viper spellcasting at all. And Clem with a really nice fight there. There's the Parasitic Bomb, but a very fast split from Clem. That it is. This bio is getting pretty heavily stemmed, though, steadfast. Oh, bile! We're gonna be okay. But all the army, 50% HP. If Solar can get us around, if he can get... I don't think he has any investors right now, but he find, can find something. As now, Ultras are a little bit faster. This bio is so red! It's so freaking red! And Clem's gonna have to back away. Bailey's got a massive shot here. And there's a Roach counterattack on the north side as well. Finally, Solar breaks out onto Clem's side of the map briefly, and 19 SCVs go down. That is a very big find for Solar right there. Really breaking the momentum of Clem for the moment. If we look at the army supply, though, it is still looking very good for Clem overall. He is... That bird <laughs> Ravager popping up very funnily. Uh, he is still adding on Ghost, and he's still got a lot of powerful army. Ultralists are going to come on in on Rudolph the Red-Nosed Terran army. 
Uh, rapidly becoming Rudolph the Green Nose Terran army as the healing happens. And now with Liberators in this army as well. Ghosts are good, Liberators also pretty solid, but at least there's an answer there. There are enough Ravagers to knock this down, but the target fire Clem is just showing us, well, first of all, why Ultras don't tend to be all that great, but second of all, why Clem is really good against that. I mean, yeah, no, if you can keep kiting back off of Creep, there's no Infestors to lock them down, no Surround. Even just the Medivac's able to pick them up, and the Ultralists can't give the hugs that they just, they just love so much to give. It's hard to find value with them. Clem has rebuilt SCVs during all this. He's taken a fifth base, and he is continuing to apply the pressure. The trades from Clem have been quite good. Ultralists on their lonesome are gonna end up being a very nice Christmas gift to Clem. Two of them going down for free. And this is gonna be even a lot of drones. Big pickoffs for Clem here. That it is. And while the trading for Solar was nice for a time, it was equalizing, it was stabilizing as these Ultras have popped out. Clem has been doing so nicely. And with this Liberator here, Vikings just denying the Viper. Yeah, there's a Parasitic Bomb, but you want something more than that. He's trying to section off the north side base, but Solar's gonna be able to break it for now. But the bottom side, Marauders at the front, the Bailings cannot get what they want. And Solar, he's gotta find at least one fight to win, but it doesn't feel like he can get either. No, Clem just isn't letting him. He's doing such a good job of avoiding those Banelings, migrating both these armies at once. Ultralisk is going to be forced back once again. Clem has zoned out this topside base. Solar not able to secure that sixth base that he so desperately needs. And Clem is really starting to tighten the noose at this point. He's got to be smelling victory at this point. That is, but for now, Ghost will go down. But again, the snipes, even as you trade a Liberator for it, Ultra for Liberator, absolutely. You love to see it. And in a 10,000 deficit with the Widow Mines finding value again here, Clem senses a bit of an opportunity, gets on top of the Ultras. Not something you normally want to do, but when there's nothing to defend them, oh! you can target it down to the Widow Mines again and again, steadfast. Clem finds it. And another one. And another one. Huge Widow Mine connection right there. Solar, just as he started to push that army back on the top side. He gets blindsided. Onside gaming. Oh, but the friendly fire widow mine. Okay, well that that a good was blindside mine given. gaming, sure. A good widow mine giveth, a good widow mine taketh away. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, but there's Ooh. the burrowed shark fester, but it's spotted by the missile turret. Clem turns around, scans it, snipes it. He says, "Not today, Solar. I got a date with a round of four, but it's not over yet. Another decent widow mine shot." and Solar is running out of options at this point. There's a second investor somewhere on the map. We don't see it right now, don't know where it is. And that has to be what Solar's looking for at this point. One big fungal. Banelings on top, Ultras on top, Blinding Cloud on top. Everything goes down, the biggest wombo of combos that you've ever seen. But Clem knows there are investors on the map. He's gonna be looking to bait this out. He's gonna be looking to make sure that fungal gets at most maybe a couple of Marines. And again, these Liberators, they're just making it hard for the Roaches, making it hard for the Ultras to really take the fight that they want to fight. Yeah, they certainly are. We don't have that advanced ballistics. We don't have 3-3. Three, three. Clem has been just staying on this 2-2 for forever at this point. Solar did add on the plus three melee, and that has allowed him to take some better fights marginally. But is this going to be enough to break this? Fungal Growth does land, and that will allow the Ultralist to get in on top of this. But the hot pickup, he gets on out, and the Ravagers, there's not enough of them to one-shot with the Corrosive Vials, so he can't clear that Liberator just yet. Single little drop coming back down on the bottom side will eventually get cleaned up, but Clem, he really wants to end this now. He needs to start thinking about at least adding on that 3-3, though. He really does, and I, Solar, add more Infestors. He's got the gas, doesn't have the minerals. That's when you add Infestors into this, and Clem kites around the corner again, gets snipes. This is this fight right here, this ebb and flow has been defining this game. Clem finds value, he cannot break the right side base, but he gets a little closer every single time. And now the supply is really starting to reflect that. 76 army supply to 115. Ultra's on the way, nothing in this fight, but the Lings again with that plus three, with Adrenal as well. They're fighting so hard. They're doing better than the Banelings. They're doing better than the Ultras. They're the one thing really keeping Solar in this game. 
heat, but Solar is just running out of money. He just cannot mine. He's trying to push this army back so desperately. And even though the trades are trades, they are trades that are favoring Clem, even if Solar was on six or maybe even seven bases, but he's not. He's never been able to secure another base. There it is. GG, well played, gets called. 